Hey developers, welcome to CodeDev. My name is Mudasir Magpul and in today's video, we are going to resize and compress images on the front end. Well, normally the way it works is you take an image from user, you send it to the back end and then the server will do all this hard grind. But in some cases, resizing and compressing image on the front end can come very handy, especially when you want to save the server from doing all this hectic stuff and utilize some of the resources on the user's browser. So, but you have to be very careful and first you need to ask yourself whether this is the right approach or not in your use case. In some cases it is a very good use case so that's what we are going to do. We are going to take an image, resize it into a smaller size that we need and then send it back to the server. We are not going to send it to the server in this video, that is for some next video. But for now our focus is on the JavaScript and all the techniques that we need and we need to know in order to resize an image within the JavaScript or on the front end. So let's get started and dive into the code. All right, so I have created a, sim uh, a simple project. At the moment, I only have two files, the index.html file, which imports the app.js file here. And I only have two elements. Uh, num the first one is this input element. Uh, then the important thing over here is the type of the input, which is definitely file, and it accepts only um, the certain types of JPEG images. Uh, sorry, a certain type of images. So it's PNG and JPEG images. Um, and last but not least is the input ID. So this ID is important because that's what we are going to use to uh, select this element in the JavaScript. And then the second thing we have is a is a, an input div, in fact, with an ID of wrapper. Now the reason for this div is, let's say if I want to display the image in the browser, I will use this wrapper and append the image to this wrapper. So let's go back to the app.js file and see what we have here. Over here we only have the console. Uh, we have one line just to test. So now if I go to the browser, I should see hello world um, because that's what we're con doing console log over here. So everything is working fine at the moment. Let's get started with the code. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that whenever this input field is changed. What do I mean by change is whenever you click on it and select an image file. So if I click on it and then I select a file, now you see the, the file has been selected. Now this selection triggers a change event in the JavaScript. So we need to listen for this change event. So every time a new image is selected, we'll listen for the change event and perform the compression and resizing on that image. So let's go to the ba uh, back to the JavaScript and make use of this input ID. So definitely the very first thing we need to do is to select this input element. So I'll, I'll say let input is equal to document dot get element by ID and the ID is input. And now that we have selected the input, uh, the second thing I need to do is to listen for the um, select event. Now to, to listen to an event, an event can be a click event or anything else, but in this case we are looking for the change event. We can add an event listener to the element. So I'll say add event listener and the, the first parameter to add event listener is the type of the event. So the type of event in this case is change. So I'll say listen for change and whenever we have a change, we are going to execute this method and this method is going, this is basically the callback method and this is going to accept the event. Um, and in this event, basically there are some interesting things for those of you who don't know what this event looks like. So I'll just console log this, um, uh, this event just to display what we have within this event. So let's go back before before I go back, let me show you what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just listening for the change event. And every time we have an event change, I'm going to console log that event and just to see what options do we have within that event. So let's go ahead and choose a new file, select the file. And here you have the event object in the console log. Now it does have a quite a few properties, but the one that we are interested in, in all cases, whenever we have, we have an event is this target. So target basically gives us the, the source of this event. So in this case, the source of this event is this input element. So if I go event.target, this will basically return um, this input element. And as you can see in this input element, we have a file. So I need to access that file. So in this target, if you open it up, 
and you scroll down all the way to files you see we have a files array now within this files array we have one file at the moment there could be multiple files um, if you add the multiple tag uh, multiple attribute to this input it will let user select multiple input uh, multiple images but for now we don't want to deal with multiple images because you know that's only going to make things complicated so for now we are only going to to have one image and that one image file will always be on the zero at the index so let's go ahead and get this file out of uh, this event to do that I need to um, create a new variable I'll say image file and this image file is within event.target.files and in the files I'm looking for the zero at index and this basically will return the image file and now if I go ahead and console log this image file and go back to the browser select a new image let's go with this one Okay, we do have an issue, which is the spelling mistake. So don't worry about that. Let's go back, select an image again. The road.jpg image that I've selected. Now you can see in the in the console log, I have the file. So we don't need to look into the properties of the files. These are quite simple. Um, what we need to do or what we aim to do at the moment is we need to convert this file into a readable URL. So we can create an image element from that. Now to convert a file into an, a URL, uh, in this case an image file to a URL, we need an instance of a file reader. So basically we are going to read this file and read it as URL. That's how you need to remember it. So let's go ahead and create a reader. And this reader is going to be an instance of file reader. So now that we have the file reader, I can say reader.read uh, before I do that, let's first see what do we even have in this con uh, in this reader. So let's just console log this reader and see what options does it provide. So now if I go back and select a new image, now you can see the second one is the file reader. At the moment, every everything is null. Uh, on load is null. It hasn't loaded yet. And the the one key that I'm looking for is the result. So see result is null at the moment but next time i will come here you'll see result will be changed and this is where we are going to find the url that we're looking for and in the prototype if you go down to the methods you'll see a couple of useful methods and the one we are looking for is this read as data url so that's what i need to do i need to say reader dot read as data url so reader dot read as as data url and what do I want to read? I want to read this file. So I'm going to pass the file to it. And now if I go ahead and console log the uh, the reader, now you will see that the, there will be a result um, value in the reader. So now if I go ahead and select an image, now you can see that we okay, now yeah, yeah now you can see we have the result and in the result we have a base 64 URL now it's it seems short but it's a long URL it's a very long string and you can see it's a base 64 URL and the type is image slash JPEG so we converted that road.jpg file into a readable URL and now I can use this URL to display this image create an image tag from it and from that image tag again I can either display it on the screen or create a new image from that existing image tag so to do that, first I need to make sure that this uh, this reader has fully loaded. So I'll say reader.onload and let's pass it the event and open up the body. Now I'm going to write all my logic in this block. So it will just ensure that the event or the reader has fully loaded. So now I can access this reader through event.target. As you know, event.target gives us the source of the event, which in this case is the reader. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking for reader.result and that is inside event.target.result. So this is our URL and I'm going to save it in image URL variable URL. 
So now inside this image URL, I have the base64 URL of the image. So I can use this URL to create the uh, a new element. So what I'll do is I'll say document.create element. And in this case, the element will be an image element. And let's just save this um, element in a variable. And let's call this variable image. So we have this uh, new element now and I need to give this. So, so what this does basically is it creates an IMG tag, this new tag in the DOM. And what I need to do now is I need to give this IMG tag a source. So it is a proper image tag with the same image that we need it to have. So let's say image dot source is equal to image URL that should be it now so far everything is good what we can do here is we can either display this image i think it's better if i display the image first and then move on so to display this image what i'm going to do i'm going to select this wrapper and then append the image to this wrapper so i'll say document dot get element by id and the id in this case is wrapper and i'll say append child and the child is going to be the image. So hopefully it makes sense. What we are doing basically, we're selecting the wrapper and we are appending the image to the wrapper. Now, if I go back and select an image, let's select the same road image. And there you can see we have a massive image. Now that's the purpose of this tutorial. We are going to take this massive image. As you can see, I have to scroll to see it. This is that big. So I need to I need to take this image and create a new image from this image tag. And that new image will basically be of a smaller size or of any size that I want it to be. Now, the next thing is to create the image. To do that, we are going to make use of canvas. But for that, I need to first make sure that this image has fully loaded, just like we did for the reader, um, for reader to load. So if I just simply copy this one over here, and I wait not for reader, but I wait for the um, for the image to to fully load. In this case, let's call it EVT or just call it E. I don't want both of these to have same name, although that will still work. But um, yeah, so when the image has loaded, what I'll do first, I'll comment this out. And then what I'll do is I will basically create a canvas on the on the document. And this canvas element is same as image element or any HTML5 element. And within that canvas, we can do anything. We can basically draw anything that we want. So first thing first, we need to create an element named canvas. So just like we did for the image, I'm going to say canvas um, canvas is equal to create document dot create element. And this element is canvas. So now that we have a canvas element and just like we did for the image, we set the attributes of the image. We need to set the attributes of this canvas. So canvas is going to have a certain width and a certain height. Um, let's let's first define the width. So at the very top, I'm going to uh, create a const and I'll say width. And you can give any width to it, but at the moment, let's just go with 800. So what I'm doing, basically, I'm setting the width of the new image or the new canvas. At the moment, let's not talk about image. Let's just talk about the canvas. So I need to define the width and the height of this canvas. So canvas dot width is equal to width. And the second thing is height. Now, this is very important. Um, Whenever you resize an image, there are three ways you can do that. You can, let's say your image is this big and you want to resize it. So you resize its width. What will end up happening is either you are going to uh, sort of compress the image or you are going to crop the image. And the third option is you, re you not only reduce the width, but as well as the height and in the same aspect ratio. So if it is a square, it still remains a square. If it is a 16 ratio 9 image, the aspect ratio remains the same. So whenever the width changes, the height also changes. And that is what we want to achieve. So for that to happen, we need to first get the aspect ratio of the image. So every image is going to have its own aspect ratio. So I can get the aspect ratio. So let's create a new variable ratio. And this new variable ratio is basically going to 
we obtain by dividing the width, the new width that we have divided by the original width of the image. So the new width is definitely this width and the, or the width of original image is going to be uh, I can act so the image dot width basically, but I don't want to call image dot width. What I'll do is I'll say uh, e dot target dot width. So e dot target gives us the image back and then the width. So this will basically give us the the ratio. And now I can also go ahead and uh, set the height. So canvas dot height. Oops, sorry, not that way. Canvas dot height is going to be equal to well, yeah, now here's the interesting thing. So we want to multiply this ratio with the actual with the actual height of the image, the original image. So I need to get the e dot target dot height, the actual image height multiplied by the ratio. And that should do the job. Now, if this thing doesn't make any sense to you, do comment down below. I'll try to further explain it, but it is just to make sure that the image is whenever it is resized, it is resized in the right um, aspect ratio. We don't need to stretch or crop the image. That's the goal. So the next thing is we need to draw the image on this canvas. So now we have an empty canvas, like a blank canvas. Now on this canvas, I want to draw the image. Now to draw the image, I need to first get the context. So how what is context and how does it work? Let me just show it to you. So I'm gonna say, let or let's just make it a const so const context is equal to um canvas dot get context and we need to pass it a parameter what kind of context do we want so what we are doing basically we have this this canvas but on that canvas we want to draw image so we are basically getting a context from the canvas which is a 2d context so a 2d plane on the context or on the canvas is what we have at the moment within this context and now this is interesting and this context on the context we can draw image so i'll say context dot draw image and I need to pass it the image that I want to draw and it has to be an image tag, right? So the image tag that we have is this one, the image. So I'm gonna pass it the image. And the second parameter that I need to pass it is the X and Y axis. Where do I want to draw this image on the context? So I want to draw it on the origin, like on zero and zero on both X axis as well as on the Y axis. So X axis zero, Y axis zero. And additionally, you can also pass the width and height of the canvas. So first thing is going to be the width of canvas. And second thing is the height of the canvas. So these are the five parameters that we pass to the draw image. And this will actually draw the image on the canvas. So now if I go ahead, um, in fact, before I go ahead, let me just console log the context and let's see what we can do with this context now that we have drawn an image on the context. So let's just say context and go back to the browser, select an image. I'll select the same image. Uh, let's just expand this. And now you can see I have the canvas rendering context to the to the object. And this object, if this is the context object, right? And within this object, we have this canvas. So I can say context.canvas and let's see what do we have in the canvas. If I scroll all the way, all the way down, um, Oh, in fact, I need to go to the method. So basically I need to find a method here, which is going to be used to convert it to the data URL. So it should be in T. Okay, there it is. So this one, the two data URL. So what I can say now is canvas dot, uh, context dot canvas, and within the canvas, we have this method, which will basically then convert this, uh, this, this context back to the data URL that we need. So let's just go ahead and do that. And I am going to store that into as new new image URL. So this new image URL is going to be equal to context dot canvas dot to data URL. And this two data URL basically it, it, it accepts two parameters and both parameters are optional. So you can literally just go with that and it will do the job. But if you want to define the output type of the file, the new file, the, Im the new image that you want, you can set the type of that and also the, quant the quality of the image. So 
let's say you don't need a massive quality image like 100% uh, quality you can set the quality to you know 50% 60% so in this case I'm going to first set the the output type which in this case I need is a JPEG image so I am a GE image slash JPEG and the second parameter I'm going to go with 90 so you can go with any number from 1 to 100 but I'm going with 90 so basically it will reduce the quantity quality of the image down to 90% so that's what it is doing so with that being said let's go ahead and um, well there is no no reason to console log this image i'm pretty sure we're gonna have this url so let's just go ahead and create a new image uh, element with this new url so I'll, I'll copy the code from above and in this case this will be new image and i'll say new image dot source is equal to new image url and let's just uncomment this and put it up here and append like we did before so hopefully this time we're not going to see that gigantic image but a smaller compressed and resized image let's just go back refresh and select a new image file i'm going to select this road image and there you go we have a compressed image in a smaller size so there you have it so this is now 800 pixels wide and it has adjusted it, it, its height itself. So it's not a cropped or, comp or, or a stretched image. It's rather a, an image in the initial or the original aspect ratio. And that was the purpose of this video. Now, let's say if I want to create to compress this image, image further, let's say I only need this in the size of 300 pixels wide, then I can go back, refresh, uh, reselect an image. And as you can see, this time we have an even smaller image. So you can play around with this number, the width, and you know, uh, set the output to whatever pixels of the width that you want. So that is how it works. If you, let's say, want multiple images, not just one image, let's say you want to generate five images out of it, let's say one 1920 pixels wide, the second 1000 pixels, and so on. In that case, you know, you can create an array here, define the um, these different sizes that you need and then just wrap this thing this image on load uh, while you we're, while you're creating a new canvas in a loop and just run the loop with that uh, width of the index of the, of the of the array and that will create multiple images for you but those things we will do in the next video uh, I didn't plan it but I think I'm gonna create a couple of more videos on this topic uh, in the next one what I'll do is I'll take the same concept and I'll apply it within Vue.js or React.js and then also upload the image back to the server so if you want to learn more about image compression and resizing stay tuned I hope this tutorial was helpful uh, it did take some time, but it was a good learning curve, especially if you guys are interested in knowing more about doing this hectic stuff on the front end. So before you leave, if you have any question, leave in the comments down below. Do not forget to subscribe this channel. Again, this is actually my first video on this channel. So a very good, exciting moment for me. And hopefully you guys will join me in this journey by clicking that subscribe button. And again, Go ahead and like the video because that's what I need at the moment, your support. So see you in the next video for now. Goodbye.